I've seen comments saying that some interviewers pay more attention to the resume than the applicant. And there are several reasons for this. One is that they truly have some note taking to do while the applicant is talking, or they have heard the same answers over and over again and that their brains simply zone out. And why should we hire you? Uh, you should hire me because I'm hardworking. I'm hardworking. I'm hardworking? You simply cannot impress an interviewer by sounding like everybody else. You have to stand out in your own positive way. And here are my three tips to do just that. Number one, show, don't tell. Don't just say you're great. Visualize it using words. For example, what do you think of this answer? You should hire me because I'm hardworking. If you give me a chance to be a part of your company, I will do whatever it takes to get the job done and exceed your expectations. Rest assured that I will, you will not regret hiring me. See, this is just the kind of answer that you want to avoid in a final interview. It's not as bad as far as answers go, but it could definitely be made more persuasive. And you can be more persuasive if you paint pictures using words. For example, you should hire me because I'm hardworking. As a teacher for five years, I performed different tasks for different occasions. I organized school activities, ensured that my students learned my lectures, acted as their second parent, and performed repetitive tasks like writing lesson plans. It wasn't always easy. At times, it was overwhelming. Other times, it's monotonous. But my willingness to work hard was what kept me going for five straight years. And I believe that that could truly help me thrive as a CSR. Now, that's a better way to put it. So what's the difference here? Notice. With the first answer, all it says is, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. The second answer, however, not only says I'm great, but also explains why it did this by painting a picture with words. By visualizing her related job experience, she leaves no ambiguity as to why exactly she's a great hire. When you hear this, it forces you to picture a teacher working hard to guide her students, write boring lesson plans, deal with feisty children, and organize PTA meetings. It sounds more organic, much more believable, persuasive. My tip number two is to avoid generic, cliche, and vague answers. Zoom in and be more specific. Your goal in a final interview is to wow your interviewer. And you're not going to do that with banal, cliche, boring answers. So going back to the improved answer from number one, what do you think could be done to polish this answer even more? So what I suggest is we replace hardworking with a trait that is a little more specific. We have visualized using words, check, but hardworking is still too general. My problem with hardworking is it could mean different things to different people. For example, it could mean these things. So saying hardworking does not help your interviewer zero in on what exactly makes you a great hire. So your answer tends to sound weak, shallow, and commonplace. And that might be enough to actually get you the job to pass the interview. But if your goal is to impress your interviewer, this is not the answer you want. So what I suggest in this case is we replace hardworking with a strong sense of responsibility and the message becomes even stronger. This is one of those answers that makes interviewers look up from the resume, pay attention, nod, because it's different from what they usually hear. See, the human brain is designed to operate on autopilot when dealing with familiar things, things it sees and hear every day, it barely notices. You know, things like brushing your teeth, cutting your nails, commuting. These are routines and they're on autopilot. They're boring because they're familiar. What it does notice without fail, however, is novelty, something new, something a little off than usual. When you say something a little more different from what's considered common, and on top of that, paint a clear picture with words, the brain has no choice but to pay attention because it's vivid and it's different. And I'm not even saying that your answer has to be a one in a million kind of different or rare. It just has to be a little less cliche, a little less common than the answers they hear on a daily basis. After all, they're not just looking to hire one applicant. Most of them are mass hiring. But the better you frame your answer, the stronger you frame your answer, the higher a chance of getting in. And the best way to do that is by zooming in and getting more specific. Another example is great at customer service. 
This is quite a broad term and it can be specified even more. Here's another sample answer. And my third tip is to inject life into your delivery, verbally and non-verbally. You might have already heard of the statement, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. But maybe this, mess this message is too simplistic to be taken too seriously. But there's definitely some truth to this. Uh, in my previous job, I was a private tutor. And one of the most common reasons why, why parents hire me was um, because their children... Their, their children were falling behind at school. They were having a hard time absorbing the lessons and and they need an extra boost. The most important life skill I the most the most important skill I probably learned from it from from five years of teaching is being able to to make complex ideas easy to understand by breaking them up. Um uh, um and as a technical support representative, I think that it's a pretty important skill. The The faster the the customers understand the instructions, the, the more satisfied they are. In my previous job, I was a private tutor. And one of the most common reasons that parents hire me was because their children were falling behind at school. You know, they were having a hard time understanding or absorbing the lessons and they just need that extra boost that a private tutor could provide. I think the most important skill that I learned from it was the ability to make complex ideas easy to understand by breaking them down into bite-sized pieces. And as a technical support representative, I think that it is a pretty important skill. The faster the customers understand the instructions, the more satisfied they are. So in summary, what you should be paying attention to are your vocal variety and your body language. I've talked about body language in this video. I'm gonna link it up here. I've talked about how to look confident when you're interviewing. But what vocal variety means is in speech, it is a way to communicate by changing the sound of your voice using different speeds and tones, changing the volume, using pauses while speaking, and as a result, it's more stimulating to hear, it's less boring, it's more engaging. And you might ask, how can I improve my vocal variety? How can I practice? And what I want you to do, the only thing that I want you to do on a daily basis until you master it is to mimic the people that you want to copy, that you want to emulate. The question I get asked a lot is, how do I talk about myself without bragging? A question I get asked a lot is, how do I talk about myself without bragging? Especially in interviews or on dates. Especially in interviews or on dates. Or in areas where you want to put yourself out there. Or areas that, where you want to put yourself out there. But you don't want to sound like you're braggy. But you don't want to sound like you're braggy. Or showing off. Or showing off. So here's how you can talk about yourself without showing off. So here's how you can talk about yourself without showing off. Don't just copy what they say, copy their pitch, their intonation, their volume, their body language, their manner of speaking, the pauses, everything they can possibly copy to replicate what they say 100% if you can. Are you the kind of person that pushes yourself to step into that? Are you the kind of person that pushes yourself to step into that? Or do you pull back? Or do you... Pull back. That's the power of a five-second decision. That's the power of a five se That's the power of a five-second decision. Yeah, maybe you can go and become a Buddhist monk and. Yeah, maybe you can go and become a Buddhist monk. Meditate for. And meditate for. Months and, and meditate for four months. Get full control of your physiology. Get full control of your physiology. You do this every single day until you get the hang of it. And it's just sort of like learning your favorite song, learning the melody of your favorite song. Really pay attention to the interviewers, right? Super attention. Like, don't glare at them like you're aggressively paranoid, but like, make sure you're focused on them. Make sure you're focused on them. 
And then the other thing I would say is... And then the other thing I would say is... Say what you really think. Say what you really think. The best way to stand out. The best way to stand out. In an interview. In an interview. Always. Always. Assuming you're competent. Assuming you're competent. You've done the preparation. You know, and you've done the preparation. And that you're not living a lie. And you're not living a lie. Is to actually say what you think. Is to actually say what you think. Is to actually say what you think. You gotta be willing to look like a fool, but when you do this enough times, eventually applying variety to your voice will be second nature. And you might say, what if I have other problems? What if I don't have that much problem delivering my message strongly, but in the middle of an interview, I freeze and my mind goes completely blank and I no don't know what to say next. Well, that's gonna be in my next video. In my next video, I'm gonna talk about the prep and star framework more extensively so you know how to deal with mental blocks and come up with answers that are coherent and articulate. I'll also talk about final interviews, how they're different from initial interviews and what the interviewers wanna hear from you. And once both videos are ready, I'm gonna link it here in the end screen or in the comment section. What's the trickiest question you encountered in a job interview? Leave a comment below and whatever gets the most like, I will make a video about it. And if you have any requests and questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck, everyone.